Let's have a look at this second test for heteroscedasticity. It's called the Broish Pagan test. It's based or it's basically a bigger version of the ones that we did, of the one that we did in the previous video of the Goldfield Quant test. And the idea is this. In the previous video, we looked at the relationship in a one variable regression model where we would test for the relationship between the variation in the error term based on the independent variable and see whether that variation changes across the data. But now what we want, we want to scale that. What happens if we have more variables in the model? So instead of having just one variable, let's assume we have three. We have three independent variables, so we want to see whether there's a relationship between the variation of the error term and any of those variables. So what we're interested in is whether we have a significant effect from any of them. It doesn't necessarily have to be that all of them are going to affect the variation, but if we at least have one, vari um, one effect from one of these variables on the variation of the error term, then we have a case for heteroscedasticity. So what are we testing right now is under the null hypothesis, there is no effect from the independent variables on the variation of the error term. So under the null hypothesis, there is no effect from x1, x2, and x3. So delta 1 must be 0, delta 2 must be equal to 0, and delta 3 must be equal to 0. But then under the alternative hypothesis is that at least one of them is significant. At least one of them differs from 0. So at least delta i, right, 1, 2, or 3 is going to be different than 0. How do we test that? Well, we test an f-test on joint, uh, joint effect. So we want to know whether they jointly have an effect or not. And how do we do that? By looking at the change in R squared. So let's see. What is the F-test over here? Now, what we notice is that under the null hypothesis, we have three variables to take into account. So the idea is this. When we use three variables in the model, then we know that R squared is going to increase. But is that increase significant or not? So we're doing an F-test on the change in R squared to see whether the R squared increases significantly. So we take the difference, we're, we're interested in the difference in R squared. We take the difference between the R squared of the full model, which happens with all these variables together, relative to the R squared of the restricted model. And we're gonna discuss the R squared of the restricted model now, because that's gonna be equal to zero. And let's see why that is the case. Well, look, what happens the, in the restricted model? In the restricted model, we, de we don't take into account these variables. So the variation is constant. Now, when we have a constant variation, in this case, the dependent variable is constant, well, that means there is nothing to explain. There is no variation to explain in the results because the results are constant. So the R square, because there's nothing to explain by the model, is going to be equal to zero. So the R square of the restricted model over here is going to be equal to zero. And recall that because we are inflating the R square by adding variables, we must control for that and we must divide by the number of additional variables that we're using. So we're dividing by the additional variables, which are one, two, three. We're dividing it by three. And we take that relative to one minus R square of the full model one minus r square of the full model and again we take into account the degrees of freedom which is the number of observation minus the number of independent variables in the full model which is one two three again and minus one and minus three minus one whatever that f value is we compare with the critical value as always and that can give us a conclusion that can tell us whether there is whether there is a joint effect of the independent variables of the vari on the variation of the error terms or not. And if we do have a significant result, then we would give the conclusion that there is uh, a significant effect. So we have a significant joint effect. We have a significant joint effect of the independent variables on the variation of the error term, of the independent variables on the variation, on the variation of the error term, variation of the error term. Now, we don't know, we don't know exactly which one is affecting the error term. We can do that by testing them independently. But first of all, we must know whether jointly there is an effect of those independent variables on the variation of the error term so that we can give the conclusion that we do have a case, we do have a significant heteroscedasticity. That's the idea, heteroscedasticity. Yeah, that's how we do it. That happens when we have more than one independent variables. So we basically just scale what we did in the previous video. Hope this all makes sense and we're done.